more than 540 pages. And each one of us has recorded his own opinion on almost every issue that was raised before the court. So I will request you to start making your comments on the judgment after reading it rather than before reading it. I'll read the order of the court. And please forgive if I'm not very fluent in reading it because this has been drafted by my learned brother, Mr. Ajaz Afzal Khan. I, a majority of three against two, Asif Saeed Khan Khosa and Gulzar Ahmed J.J. dissenting, who have given separate declarations and directions, we hold that the questions, how did Gulf Steel Mill come into being, what led to its sale, what happened to its liabilities, where did its sale proceeds end up, how did they reach Jeddah, Qatar and the United Kingdom, whether respondents number seven and eight, in view of their tender ages, had the means in the early 90s to possess and purchase the flats, whether sudden appearance of the letters of Hamad bin Jasim bin Jabir Al Thani is a myth or a reality, how bearer shares crystallized into the flats, who in fact is the real and beneficial owner of Messrs. Nielsen Enterprises Limited and Nescol Limited. Where did the money for flagship investment limited and other companies set up or taken over by respondent number eight come from? And where did the working capital for such companies come from? And where do the huge sums of sums running into millions gifted by respondent number seven to respondent number one drop in from? which go to the heart of the matter and need to be answered. Therefore, a thorough investigation in this behalf is required. In normal circumstances, such exercise could be conducted by the National Accountability Bureau, but when its chairman appears to be indifferent and even unwilling to perform his part, we are constrained to look elsewhere and therefore constitute a joint investigation team, JIT, comprising of the following members. One, a senior officer of the Federal Investigation Agency, FIA, not below the rank of additional director general, who shall head the team having first-hand experience of investigation of, what, uh, of white collar crime and related matters to a representative of the National Accountability Bureau, three, a nominee of the Securities and Exchange Commission of Pakistan familiar with the issue of money laundering and white collar crimes, four, a nominee of the State Bank of Pakistan, five, a seasoned officer of Inter-Services Intelligence, ISI, nominated by its Director General, and a seasoned officer of Military Intelligence, MI, nominated by its Director General. The heads of the aforesaid Department's oblique institutions shall recommend the names of their nominees for the JIT within seven days from today, which shall be placed before us in chambers for nomination and approval. 
the JIT shall investigate the case and collect evidence, if any, showing that respondent number one or any of his dependents or Benamidars owns, possesses, or has acquired assets or any interest therein disproportionate to his known means of income. Respondents number one, seven, and eight are directed to appear and associate themselves with the JIT as and when required. The JIT may also examine the evidence and material, if any, already available with the FIA and NAB relating to or having any nexus with the possession or acquisition of the aforesaid flats or any other assets or pecuniary resources and their origin. The JIT shall submit its periodical reports every two weeks before a bench of this court constituted in this behalf. The JIT shall complete the investigation and submit its final report before the said bench within a period of 60 days from the date of its constitution. The bench thereupon may pass appropriate orders in exercise of its powers under Articles 184.3, 187.2, and 190 of the Constitution, including an order for filing a reference against Respondent No. 1 and any other person having nexus with the crime if justified on the basis of the material thus brought on the record before it. It is further held that upon receipt of the reports, periodic or final of the JIT, as the case may be, the matter of disqualification of respondent number one shall be considered. If found necessary for passing an appropriate order in this behalf, respondent number one or any other person may be summoned and examined. We would request the Honorable Chief Justice to constitute a special bench to ensure implementation of this judgment so that the investigation into the allegations may not be left in a blind alley. This is the court order on behalf of the entire bench, but reflects the conclusions reached by three honorable members. The remaining members of the bench have gone a step further. According to the remaining members of the bench, apart from criminal investigation and criminal prosecution, a declaration has been made that all the explanations given by respondent number one and his children about the relevant properties have not been found to be acceptable and the same are rejected. They have also declared that in the matter of explaining possession and acquisition of the relevant properties in London, respondent number one has not been honest to the nation to the representatives of the nation in the National Assembly and to this court. And therefore, he is declared to have become disqualified from being a member of the National Assembly, uh, Majlis Shura Parliament, and the silence, please. And the Election Commission of Pakistan is directed to denotify respondent number one forthwith. Thank you very much.